welcome. This is Fashion Art and Media. And today I have a guest all the way from India, from Mumbai, India. Welcome. Namaste. Namaste. Thanks, Lydia. Good evening. Thank you so much for having me here on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much. It's, it's really a big pleasure. You know, love you. I love you too. You radiate a lot of positive energy. You are just full of, you know, your face just tells anyone that you are just a great, amazing person. And that's awesome. Great smile. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Lydia. Thank you so much. Actually, you're, you're transferring the energies to me. Oh. So that shows up on my face. <laughs> Thank you so much. Anyway, now we'd like to get to know you. Please tell us, you recently have uh, won a title. Can you tell us a bit about how you started and what made you get to the title, please? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, I'm a typically, uh, well, my name is Saraswati Ayur. And all my life, I have been a typical um, a nine to five uh, person who used to go to work, uh, take care of family and uh, do all sort of things that of course you could say that a normal human being would do. But uh, there was always a dream that I was born with that uh, I want to take, you know, participate in a pageant and win it. So whatever I used to get, I used to put it on my head and anything that I get used to be my, my trophy. So uh, I, I was always, I have always lived this dream. So when this pageant happened to me, I said, oh my God, there was an inner voice that said, uh, participate. We will see how it unfolds. I participated and kept on facing, taking up challenges that came my way. Now challenges were eventually from my professional field, from my personal field and uh, from my inner con inner conflicts also. So there were an umpteen number of challenges. But I thought that eventually this is what I have always dreamt of. And today here it is right in front of me. So why not give it a try? Right. And I said, yes. So I, I said, yes, I have, to, uh, I have to participate in this and I have to really make it work for me. Because if you don't have the belief and the faith that something would work for you, it never will. Yes, that's true. So, yes, that's so true. I participated. In it. I participated and eventually uh, took up all that came my way. Uh, my friends, my family members, my parents were a huge pillar of support. And right. uh, without which, obviously, without a support system, I'm sure without their blessings, uh, nothing of this would have been possible. Oh, and, that's uh, nice. Yes. That's nice. So tell us, what is your nine to five job? Uh, I work for Aditya Villa Capital. So typically it's a, it's a finance world and where I right. only talk about, I see, I dream, I sleep, I wake up with numbers in my mind oh, and wow. uh, with, with percentages of profit, CAGR, capital gain and loss ratios and stuff. Uh, but a little, a small part of me also interacts with investors, uh, with clients right. who are really irate. And that makes a lot of difference where I know that I'm born to speak. <laughs> right. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, we haven't even talked about the title that you won. Can you tell us the title? Can you tell us the pageant name? Yes. So the, the name of the, yeah, yes. It is, it's, it's called Perfect uh, Mrs. India. Perfect Woman Mrs. India pageant. Uh, 20, it was season three in 2020. And uh, this was hosted by Perfect Woman magazine, which is the first uh, talking magazine in India. And uh, I was honored to be a part, uh, a participant uh, of this pageant, which is Perfect Mrs. India. And uh, I was crowned, that was the beautiful moment of my life when I was crowned the winner of Perfect Woman Mrs. India 2020 season three. Right, so now you tell us, did you have to actually go on, um, you know, go to a venue and get uh, interviewed there or did you do it virtually? Well, uh, the time when this pageant actually showed up was a complete lockdown in India. Right. So um, uh, this happened to me, uh, to me through social media. 
And that nice. is when it clicked in my mind, you know, that uh, I will participate. I gave my name. Then there was a series of question and answers, which we yes, had to course. go through the question and yes. answers round. So um, I think there were around uh, about 2,300 initial applications uh, wow. which were received. Uh -huh. And um, eventually after filtering the curation process of Q&A, what is your presence of mind, the way you are answering the questions, the question and answer round. Uh, eventually, then there was also this cookery video that one had to make. So they shortlisted, shortlisted, came to 900. Then they find found their top 20. And eventually, they found their top 12. And I was so honored to be one of the top 12. Oh, wow. Amazing. Amazing. So actually, viewers, you might not know, the lady who owns or the yeah the owner of the director of uh, perfect woman india is a very close and dear friend of mine dr kushi gurubai yes and absolutely we talked together and um we decided that whichever winner was going to win could come to the fashion week in scotland aberdeen fashion week were you informed that Oh, uh, yes, we were definitely informed about that. And I was right. so excited. In fact, um, you know, uh, I kind of started dreaming. Yes, I am the winner and I'm walking on the ramp at Aberdeen. Wow. It was such an excitement. It was, you know, that actually created a lot of energy in me that, yes, I must do this. It's, it's for me. It's for everyone. And um, I really wanted to be a part of uh, the Aberdeen Fashion Week. And yes, Dr. Kushi Gurubai Thakkar, the entire team of Perfect Woman, the Mr. Gurubai Thakkar and Dr. Geet Thakkar, we have clearly informed us that the winner would walk in Aberdeen Fashion, Fashion Week. And I'm yes. so thrilled. Wow, amazing. So a bit personal here. Do you have children? Yes, I have a son. How old? Uh, he's a teenager. He's 19 now. Right. Wow. Amazing. How did he feel when his mom won the pageant? Well, uh, actually, both my, my son was always supportive of me. Right. And um, initially, when I participated uh, in this pageant, he kept addressing me not as mom. He said, queen. <laughs> he used to say, see, this is my queen mother. <laughs> My yeah. queen mother, you know, yeah. and uh, he kept on telling me, Mama, walk like this. You'd be walking like this on the ramp. I'm sure you're going to be wearing this. You'd be wearing the sash. You'd be wearing the crown. So he started visualizing his mother oh. just like a winner. And that oh, really wow. made a lot of difference in my life. And right. um, they say that, you know, if somebody visualizes for you so strongly, it really happens to you. Yes, I know that. Yes. So he was extremely happy. And when I won the, the day I won the crown, the entire auditorium, like where he was sitting, he literally leaped off the chair and started jumping. Yo, my mom is a winner. Oh, wow. Amazing. Yeah. Yes. Amazing. So extremely happy. Extremely happy. Oh, wow. So for talent, you cooked. Yes. What did, what did you cook? Uh, well, since I'm a professional woman, I'm left with very less time. So I did all that I can. It was something, uh, it's an Indian delicacy known as uh, uh, the chana chaat. The chana right. chaat, it's, 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 yeah, it's the horse gram, horse gram salad. Right. So right. Uh, typically more people like us who are a little more fitness conscious, you know, with less right. of oil. So it's very easy and uh, the hunger pangs, it really kills your hunger pangs. Right. And uh, the delicacy happens, you know, you can just cook it in five or 10 minutes and you are right in front of a television eating it. So, it's so a, yeah. it was a salad you made? I did, yes, yes. Wow, amazing. I, I didn't actually know that uh, in India, salad is a thing because I, I know about paratas and rotis and rice and dal. And for the non vegetarians, whatever they want to eat, I didn't think salad was a thing in India. Uh, well, Lydia, it's a very big, it's a huge hit in India. Actually, uh, the salad that I made, it's typically known as the, the chana chaat. And it is a sumptuous delicacy 
it's kind of a street food so okay. anybody who comes to india you actually find lot of these vendors selling this delicacy out on the roads and um, i thought okay fine it's it the street food would be the perfect one that i would cook because it really touches the hearts of many yes, and of it's course. eaten by many very um, very easy on the stomach and very easy on the pocket too <laughs> right that's nice so it must have been so nice for you to kind of help you get to be the winner the perfect mrs india 2021 How do yes, you feel I, having that title? Oh, in 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 one word, I feel on top of the world. Oh, that's amazing. Yes. Okay, It's what did the husband say? My husband was also there when I was being crowned. Firstly, he didn't realize that I had won the crown. So he was <laughs> sitting, he was video shooting, and he was waiting. Okay, fine. And uh, when you know the the perfect woman of the show was being announced, He thought maybe I didn't win it, so he stopped recording. Oh no! Yes, and he was like, uh, he was, uh, he was wondering that uh, why is my son jumping like a monkey on a hot brick? And then he <laughs> said, and my son said, "Papa, Mama has won the the title." He said, "What?" And oh. and then he realized. Then he realized that when they were just calling out my name, Saraswati Ayer, the tag number nine, he said, "Oh my God." this is the moment we all been waiting for right. and he said really i mean uh very <laughs> close to my heart but yes he's been a very strong support system for us because i we come from a family which is a little conservative right uh, to participate in a pageant uh, and coming out of your limits you know crossing you you know out of your limits out of your lines at right. times it could be a little difficult for people like me even though we are a career woman So, right uh, to 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 divulge from a field from your normal professional field was a little difficult but yes i received support right from day one i'm so blessed and i i really thank my god for that that's amazing now obviously you know that i've lived in india for several years i lived back in maybe 20 years actually no 10 years ago i lived in india for a year you know anyway it's not about me it's about you and what you just said uh, so in india there is obviously class system so what uh, it's called caste system isn't it caste system yes yes please tell yes. us about which one you are and tell us about the others if you don't mind yeah sure no problem so i uh, hail from a tamil brahmin family my caste oh. uh, my religion is hindu yes so i am a tamil brahmin and uh, we, wow. we wear the thread typically from the religion that way we wear the thread and we pray uh, to lord uh, shiva we are shivites so we pray to the lord shiva and wow. um, and uh, we also have uh, we also have the krishna and radha with us so we have all the gods with us so i hail from um, the state called tamil nadu which is in south uh, it's been... it's tamil nadu uh, we uh, or we are origins from a place called palakkad which is right. the border of tamil nadu and kerala kerala right. is what you say is god to the country yes right. yes right. so um, it is uh, it, it's one of the most lush and green states of india kerala yes. and yes. yeah and uh, tamil nadu and kerala are typically the states where you have the maximum temples maximum i know yes. i know yeah so uh, wow. i came from there and uh, but of course eventually i was born and brought up in mumbai but nice. i'm still so closely associated with with my uh, with my tradition if not typically caste but at least quite grounded and rooted to the religion that is if there is something that i have to do if i have to celebrate a particular festival which is uh, true to the state that i hail from either tamil nadu or kerala like day before yesterday we had onam uh, nice. from kerala so uh, uh, you know getting yourself adorned in the beautiful sari with ornaments yes. with jewelry and flowers in your hair i just love doing all that right allow me to tell the viewers viewers brahmin caste is the highest caste 
it's believed that it's next to God, isn't it? And the Brahmins, actually most of them work in the temple for God, isn't it? So yes. they are very, they are very, they are next to God, if you like, in the in the Hindu religion. So, wow, um, you are the first Brahmin that I know that works. That's very different. Wow, amazing. And you come from uh, Tamil Nadu is so beautiful. Anyone yeah. who wants to go and visit India, make sure you go to Tamil Nadu, make sure you go to Kerala. Tamil Nadu capital is? Tamil Nadu capital is Chennai. Chennai, and then the yeah. other one is Canada. Yes, that is Kerala. Kerala, the, the capital is uh, Trivandrum. It's Thiruvananthapuram now, yeah. yes. Perfect, amazing. I just, I can just uh, picture that now. Because yeah. you started talking about religion, can you tell us a bit about, uh, uh, you said you, you have Lord Shiva. My viewers, especially people in Scotland will not know who Lord Shiva is. Maybe you can okay. tell us what oh, yes. Lord Shiva presents. Yeah, uh, uh, Lord Shiva represents uh, quietness, the stillness. So there are two aspects, predominantly in the Indian culture, there are two aspects. One is Shiva and the other one is Shakti. So in an individual, what it personifies that Shiva is the calmness and the stillness in a person Fine. and Shakti is the energy of the person. So unless there is a perfect balance of the stillness and the calmness and the energy, a human being cannot function well. Right. which we That's call true. the sattva yes so we which, which we call the essence of sattva so right. uh, if you have too much of shiva in you uh, you know you would be you, you won't do anything you would be at peace you would be calm right. and you would just be still but without the energy the world will never function so to function you need the essence of shakti so right. shiva is the ultimate so shiva right. personifies uh, the supreme uh, one of the tridents, you know, one of the three shaktis, that is the yes. Shiva, uh, the Brahma, Mahesh, and Vishnu. So yes. Brahma typically is the creator, but Shiva right. is supposed to be the destroyer, but not destroyer in the real sense. Shiva destroys our ego. Shiva right. destroys our angst, our anger, our, uh, our revenge feeling, our hurt, our pain. Right. And with Shakti, they, they are just a burst of energy. Right. Wow. You know, I didn't know that. I used to think that the trio is uh, Shiva, Krishna, and Ra uh, Rama. Rama. No. Yeah, huh? yes, Rama, yes. Rama. Yeah. So Rama. now you've told me Krishna is not even part of the, the uh, three. Uh, Krishna is one of the avatars. It's like, as we right. say that, yes, he's one of the avatars. So whenever uh, there is a, uh, there is a, you know, there is a famous shloka in, in the Bhagavad Gita, which says that, which means that yadha yadha dharmasya glanir bhavati bharata abhyuktanam dharmasya tadatmanam srijanmayam dhanma samsthapanatare sambhavami yuge yuge, which means Whenever there is an imbalance that happens on the planet or the universe, I come. Right. I come to, to, to maintain the balance. So that balance, what we call is, is, a show, is an avatara. So Krishna had come as an avatara to, to bring the, the consciousness, to increase the consciousness levels of people. So we call that Krishna right. consciousness. So whenever there is uh, eventuality in the world, the consciousness level of people go down there is always a force that comes at, to raise the consciousness level of people. And wow. that's exactly how Krishna was born. Right. So I, there's something I don't understand, and I'm sure our viewers are going to want to know this. So you have three top gods, right? Yes. Yes. That's, that's just right. like Christianity. We have uh, Jesus, God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Absolutely, you, absolutely. You think it's the same? Of course. Holy Spirit, or what we say, Kalki. 
Holy Spirit was a phenomenon and right. to anchor that phenomenon, uh, Christ took birth so that he would pass on the message of the Holy Spirit. Now, why Jesus Christ came to earth was to teach humanity love. And that's, that's, exactly, that's exactly every phenomenon who would, and the avatars who would come to anchor. See, any phenomenon is, uh, the phenomenon is so huge and human beings might get scared or may not be able to directly connect with the phenomenon. Be right. it Spirit, or be it Yahweh or be it Kalki, right? So right. to anchor this phenomenon, you need an avatar. Right. So Christ was that avatar. Right. He came to anchor the phenomenon of the Holy Spirit. Right. Prophet Mohammed was uh, the one who to, uh, to anchor Yahweh. And uh, right. Kalki is that, yes. And Sri Amma Bhagwan, we say uh, Krishna, we say Rama, were the avatars who came to anchor the phenomenon of Kalki. One minute. So Mohammed is also an avatar. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Prophet wow. Mohammed, yes, yes, absolutely. Amazing. He anchored, he had, yes, he came to anchor the entire Allah uh, consciousness. Yes, so of course. So it's beautiful. It's beautiful. So all They're is all one. The yes, They're all it, the it, same. It's one huge consciousness. Yes, absolutely amazing. Now you've been talking about Kalki, Kalki. I know a bit about Kalki, but do you want to tell the viewers? Because this is so exciting. I know we've digressed from the pageant, but this is also important and exciting absolutely yes so uh we uh do we all realize that we are all individual consciousness right so uh we are what we do we eat we drink is that all about life we mm -hmm. get up we work we drink we eat food we go out we party well that is one aspect of life but yes. there is another aspect of life which we don't know which mm -hmm. we call the subconscious Yes. Now, we really don't have access to the subconscious because we get bits and pieces and we en end up thinking, oh, this is a deja vu. Oh, this is a clairvoyant. Oh, this is an intuition. But right. actually what happens, Kalki is a collective collection of all the individual consciousness of really enlightened spirits. So now, you mean the subconscious? Uh, yes, absolutely. Or both. It is the collective conscious of all individual subconscious of enlightened beings, of beings right. who have uh, gone away physically from the planes of earth, but they are now in light beings. That is, they are somewhere around. Consciousness cannot be seen, but it can be felt. So uh -huh. that's why you end up saying, oh, I'm feeling high today. I'm feeling unconditionally happy today. Why? Because there is a certain energy field that is created around us. And these energy fields are the higher consciousness. So from what you are saying, I just would say those are angels. Do you think so? Absolutely. Yes. Right. So oh, this is just awesome. This is awesome. I've always wanted to speak to someone about this. You came in to tell us about the pageant, but now you are going to be my special guest because... <laughs> Honestly, this is something that I find so exciting, so appealing. I would like to know so much more. I would like to know everything. So now you Absolutely. are telling us about the conscious mind and subconscious mind. Most people don't understand that there is a difference between them. And the fact that when the subconscious mind is even stronger than the conscious mind, Please tell us just something small about that. Oh, uh, yes. So it's, it's just like uh, what we see. Uh, suppose, uh, for example, let me talk, give an example of an iceberg. Yes. So what, what of the iceberg that you can see above the sea level is your conscious mind. Yes. But what you don't see is the huge iceberg, which is under the sea. Absolutely. So our subconscious is like that phenomenal iceberg. So since we really cannot see that iceberg with our naked eyes, obviously we need to go down, right? right. So if you go, if you, if you dive deep into the sea, you can see the iceberg. So your right. subconscious, you would be able to tap, not externally, but you have to look within. It's like right. peeling the layers of the cabbage. Externally, yes. it might be a cabbage, but you have to keep peeling the layers of the cabbage to understand what lies inside. And that's exactly what lies here. 
Okay, That's I'm going to tell you something here. I, I always wear my chakra beads because I believe so much that I want to, to heal my body. Ever since uh, the pandemic came, I started becoming spiritual. Do you yes. know anything about the chakra beads? I think it's Hindu. Yes, absolutely. See, a human body is ultimately made of consciousness, of energy, and uh, obviously what we call as vasanas, you know, all the things that we carry from our past birth, our right. belief system, our conditioning. So I have been conditioned the way my society is. You, be, right. you would be conditioned, your belief systems would be as yes. per what your society is. So all yes. that is, you know, the reservoir, we are a reservoir of all that. Yes. Now, what happens is if that reservoir is not aligned, right. we end up getting chronic illnesses. You are not, you, you, you know, one can be sad, one can be depressed, one can see a lot of obstacles in life. So external, in, internally, the body, the human body is made of an infinite, invisible field, energy field, which is called the chakra. Yes. And those chakras have different layers. It's, it has seven chakras, which we call as the kundalini. Yes. Kundalini, yes. So right. if these chakras, if these seven chakras are not aligned, that is where we face issues. The, right. the last chakra being this, it's called yes. the Brahmarandra or the Sahasrara chakra. If this opens, then one is enlightened. And this is right. exactly where this entire age is moving towards the higher levels of consciousness yes yes it's open and so that's, what, how it, uh, uh -huh. that's how even shiva is being personified by his third eye yes third. speaking of third eye is there a fourth eye and fifth eye uh well this is that this is typically called the third eye yes. because it's connected with the glands right above the ear lobe it's yes. called the pineal glands now, uh, the pineal glands has got, it might be a small pea-like gland, but it's got the reservoir and the information about you, not only in this life, but many, 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 many lives, because we are not here today. We've always been present for many, many, many ages. So it's got information of all that. So when this, that's why it's called as the third eye, because we have two eyes and this is the third one. So... Or we always call this as a meditation point. So there are three eyes. Yes, yes, I know. Uh, yeah. I actually believe in reincarnation because I know where I was born before now. Absolutely. Uh, and I've been there. So I am a living example of, you know, knowing reincarnation. But the eye is something that I, I really don't get. Is it really that people who have the third eye, because some people have grown into that consciousness of, of uh, opening their third eye, yes. can they yes. see things we don't see? Absolutely. So they can see, for instance, they can see angels, avatars, they can see spirits and everything like that. Absolutely, absolutely. So oh. how I'd say this is like giving an example of a radio, right? Now, right. in a radio, depending on the mood, we tune into a certain frequency. Right. And uh, yes. suppose if you're sad, obviously we want to tune into a sad frequency and you hear all sad songs. And when you're happy, obviously you don't want to tune into a sad frequency. Yes. So you, you, you tune into a music station which gives you, you know, yes. like That's yo, true. so yes. that you're happy. So our mind, our being are working on a similar level of frequency. Right. So depending on our frequency, we tune into an A or a B or a C. Mm -hmm. So we all have a third eye. We all have a third eye. It is just that we need to really work on ourselves. We all have a third eye. We all are born with the third eye. But depending on what we do, how we work towards ourselves, our inner world, to transformation of our inner self, just like, just like we take care of our skin, we take care of our... Um, our moods when like you know uh, we take care of ourselves when we i don't feel good we might just go to a stroll in a garden and we feel nice so our third eye is just like that it is shut so depending on how deeply we delve inside how we do our work on ourselves the third eye just opens is that open. why is that is that why the indian ladies wear the bindi 
Exactly, because what happens is this is known as the uh, receptive, uh, you know, this is what receives the thoughts. You yeah. see, the thoughts are always there in the thought sphere. We have stratosphere in science, we've heard stratosphere, this sphere, that sphere, but there is something known as the thought sphere. So right. the thoughts enter from here. My bindi just fell down. See, I was explaining <laughs> to you. Oh my gosh, so, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the thoughts enter from here and they leave from the back of your head. Right. So what happens is typically since the, 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 the sad state of human being is what? When a thought enters here, right? We hold on to the thought and we say it is my thought and we nurture it. We give it water and it keeps on growing, growing. For example, um, giving a very naive example, this world is really bad. That thought enters me. So what I do, I keep nurturing it and the yeah. thought becomes big and I end up saying, oh yes, the world is really bad. That's exactly what I conclude. So right. we need to learn since this is a thought sphere and thoughts enter from here. Yes. So what we usually do is we cover that place. We, we cover that place with either a tilak or a bindi. So that mm. is the essence of why typically in India, since India is extremely rich in spirituality. Yes. So why the, the men folks, they, they, you know, they put an ash or a sandalwood paste on yes. their forehead. Yes. And the women, they apply a kumkum or a bindi. That's exactly the reason. Right. You know, I'm going to start covering mine from tomorrow, I think. <laughs> oh, you must. You would look so pretty, actually, apart from the, the, the spiritual aspect. It also accentuates your face value. It increases your face value and it makes you look so beautiful. That's and true. And I, I can still, I can really visualize that how beautiful you look. In oh, the <laughs> So I'll tell you something. Um, I've been to Vrindavan where Krishna was born twice because back in the day I used to be in ISKCON. And right now I'm actually following some or learning. And um, when I went to ISKCON, you have to wear a sari and you have to wear the the color, you know? Yes. So I did that. So I, I'm, I've done that before and I think I look great. Of course. <laughs> there you go. You said it yourself. So you I'll to have to go on and go back and do that. Yes, you must. Right. We'll do it together. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. This has been so great. We might come back to this topic because I'm so excited Absolutely. and I love this topic, but we'll just have to go back to, you know, to the main topic that we were discussing before. So did you get um, about the pageant from uh, Facebook or from uh, Instagram? Oh, I'm a hardcore Instagram uh, person. So I love posting a lot of reels and maybe God heard me. Right. And he just flashed this pageant information. So I got it to know for, of it from Instagram. Right. What do you post on, on Instagram? Sorry, I didn't get that. Uh, I, uh, I post a lot of these uh, things, uh, you know, a 60 second talk with Sarah or, you know, ch change your thoughts, change the world, those kind of bits. And I put a lot of reels like my acting, my dancing, my facial you expressions. Act. I do all that. Please tell us about acting, tell us about dancing and tell us about what you do on Instagram too. Oh yes, so uh, acting, yes, I, I love acting because as, as, as I was a young, uh, you know, a child, I always, always used to stand right in front of the mirror making a lot of faces, uh, right. visualizing my, myself running around trees, swimming, jumping, or you know, if not, if this was not enough, I used to have a sword in my hand and uh, wear my mom's sari and uh, do all the craziest things right in front of the mirror, <laughs> sing and dance. I used to do all that. And uh, that eventually led me to learn dancing, which is called the Bharatnatyam for a couple of years. Right. And I'm also a trained Bharatnatyam dancer. Of course, I've lost right. touch with it now. But uh, yes, uh, I love dancing and I still do it today, uh, you know, for my own um, for my own peace and yes. uh, happiness. Yes. yes, I do that. Dancing is and great. Yeah. It lifts spirit. Absolutely. It's the easiest way to, uh, to connect with the Supreme. That's true. And singing too. 
So, Absolutely. So you've been dancing since you were very young. Very young, yes. Right. Very young. When I was about four or five, that's when my mom pushed me to, to learn dancing and I'm so great right. she did. Have you been in um, dancing concerts or something like that or you just learned about it and went to be an accountant? Uh, well, uh, not uh, in concert, concert per se, but yes, I have given a lot of performances. Uh, That's what I meant. You know, <laughs> some, yeah, typically company performances, performances like I have, I have uh, done dance shows for Barclays. Oh, I have wow. done dance shows for Aditya Birla Capital. So uh, the, the opening dance is always mine. <laughs> oh, wow. Do you do that even today? Oh, uh, not today. Yes. Uh, not exactly on, on a professional front, but uh, right. I do that at home. <laughs> yes, of course. If you get an opportunity, yes, uh, I, I might uh, take up certain charity shows, but not the Bharat Natyam because I have lost touch. But I have right. not touched, uh, lost touch with the, the inner roots of dance. Yes, of course, it has to come from the heart, isn't it? Absolutely, yes. Wow. Yes. What about acting? Tell us about uh, your acting career. Uh, career, uh, your acting. acting. Oh, well, I, I always uh, talk, you know, Lydia, I always tell myself, maybe, you know, in some lifetimes, I would have been a singer, a dancer, or an actor, because these qualities I feel has been, you know, kind of founded inside me. Yes, and yes. Uh, I could act even when I'm asleep. <laughs> so <laughs> I just uh, love acting. And uh, in, my, in my college days, I was uh, actually shortlisted for a mythological serial too, wherein right. I was supposed to be playing the role of uh, goddess Saraswati, you wow. know, holding the veena and yes. Um, yes. yeah. But then, of course, then I had to give education, uh, you know, a priority because of which I had to let go of this. But uh, now that I have done all that, I can say I've done all that. Now let yes. me focus on what is really very dear to me, my passion. Right. So, wow. So what is your main passion? Because I hear you have so many. What yeah, is actually, your, like, number one uh, my main, uh, My main passion my main passion is acting, singing, anything to do with creativity. Because right. uh, I feel that a part of, uh, you know, almost 99% of me is creative. Of so course. if you rather, uh, you talk to me numbers, I would, you know, it'll be there, but it won't yeah. be here. But if you talk to me about singing, dancing, and you will see my face light up like this. Yes. Like a thousand watt bulb. So a uh, creativity has always been close to my art. Uh, right. uh, of my heart. Mm -hmm. I'm extremely good at heart, uh, you know, arts like drawing, singing, oh. dancing, speaking. So I have mm -hmm. done a couple of anchorings too. And uh, I've tried to uh, make the audience laugh when well, right. I can just think about that. <laughs> Amazing. Now tell us, tell us, tell us, tell us about YouTube. You said you share inspiring uh, quotes. Tell us a few because we want to be inspired, especially yes. today. Today right. being a um, uh, full moon, actually. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. So yes. it's a very special and very spiritual and very high energy day. Absolutely. So Absolutely. If, you can, if you can inspire us, that will be nice. All right. Uh, well, uh, my entire gamut when I walked into the uh, spirituality was like the first thing what Sri Amma Bhagwan, I have told you about them, that they are the anchors uh, who yes. have anchored Kalki phenomenon into this world and they yes. are doing a phenomenal work to increase the level of consciousness in people. Yes. So the first thing which, uh, you know, I went to them uh, for a darshan and I was like totally fallen. I was yes. in two pieces and uh, the first thing they told me is that your external world is a mere reflection of your inner world. You perceive the world the way you see yourself. So if you see yourself in a good way, you see the world in a same way. Oh, and wow. uh, they said, uh, and one more thing is like, that really touched my heart was, uh, he said, nothing is wrong with the other. If we realize that, we could have a criminal sitting next to us. We could still be sipping a cup of uh, tea or a coffee with a criminal and feel that life is beautiful. 
That's true. Absolutely. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Yes, of course. Yeah, that's awesome. So, that's and in, indeed, we we also have a process uh, tonight uh, for the full moon. So we'll be taking. Uh, it's it's known as the diksha. Uh, diksha mm -hmm. is uh, collecting the positive energies from the moon from the universe, and then you know putting it on ourselves. So we'll be having this process at eight thirty today, uh, where we'll be we'll be taking uh, energies from the moon. So we we'll please tell me, tell us more, tell us more how you do that. Even I'm going to do something for the full moon, except oh, I have to to check uh, on you. But if you try to do what you say, yes, yes, correct. So in in Buddhism, typically they have this moon meditation because what right. they say is that. Um, uh, the moon is just like the moon, uh, uh, you know, the, you know, the waves that arises and seizes on the mm -hmm. sea, it mm -hmm. happens because of the waxing and the waning of moon, the moon yes. grows small. And yeah. then, you know, uh, that's called an Amavasya in India. And when it grows to its full size, it's called the Purnima uh, is, or the full moon, right? So it takes 21 days. So the, con the, the, the truth is that, Lydia, is that for anything to happen, or not happen in, in a person's life, it needs at least 21 days. So if you want to, if an alcoholic has to break free of his alcoholism, 21 days. If I need something good to happen and I do something very committedly, 21 days. So it's all nice. about 21 days. Uh, so on the full moon, the, the moon has got the maximum energy. Maximum energy. So just like, you know, nowadays the entire world is tapping solar energy and creating a no electri electricity stuff that everything takes from the solar energy. Right. Similarly, this has to do with the lunar energy. Now the lunar energy is the maximum during a full moon. So take all the energies from work from inside yes. and then that will help us in enlightenment. Speaking of full moon, for us, it's one o'clock but 1 30 is actually the time when the full moon will be oh, oh. in scotland oh i so see that's in eight uh 12 minutes yeah in 12 minutes no, yeah no no in 22 minutes gosh i'm not good with math <laughs> <laughs> so Okay. What what process are you going to do today? You've told us how it happens, but what are you going to do? What are you going to get? All right. So, uh, Sri Amabagwan, what they say is that the entire process happens when you are in shavasan, which means you're in a state of you know sleeping. That is when your entire body is lying flat on the surface or on, on any surface. So that is when the energies uh, align or get into your body in, a, in the most powerful way. Mm -hmm. And sleep is the best way. So this entire process would be first to, to accept uh, the diksha or the powers from the moon. Pray that whatever process would be, the, this process is to have a diksha so that we get, uh, uh, we get lots of people with higher states of consciousness and eventually that leads to awakening and enlightenment. Wow. So this entire process is for awakening and enlightenment. Yes, of course. And also manifesting because apparently during the full moon, if you want to ask the moon for anything, you can it get it. It will be given. Yes, it will Amazing. be granted. See, yes. these things are the same with all religions. We are just one, actually. actually like, yes, yes, we are. We are. Yes, we are. Because everything... From what you are telling me, it's almost like the belief that I have, except I don't know if it, I am so mixed up to be honest, because I, I read everything. I'm just a spiritual, you know? Even if I can say I'm Christian, but I'm also spiritual. And we believe in angels who are avatars. We believe in God who is one. So we are just yes. the same. Absolutely, we are just the same. But we are all so divinely customized and divinely right. unique. So there are just like there are several colors, creeds and religions and, you know, uh, everything else. Similarly, yeah. there are different degrees of, there are different levels and different types of awakening. So yes, awakening for me, I would be awakened in a, in a different way. You would be awakened or enlightened in a different way. 
ultimately right. it all leads to one that absolutely <laughs> that is so true i actually absolutely. accept completely 100% so there is so many things i would like to ask you but we will definitely have to have another part this is not it i just want more but if people want to watch especially i want to go and you know uh, go to your um, uh, instagram and see what you post because i want to open my eye believe it or not so i'm <laughs> going to go and follow you and see what you post how can people get you if people, sorry if people want to follow you how can they follow you if people want to watch what you post how can we find you uh i am known by saraswati ayer very simple and short saraswati ayer all at one go and uh, there i am i'll be there with my crown and my sash <laughs> okay cool perfect yeah. before we go i i just want to go before it's our full moon so that i can ground myself and get some nice energy so anyway so uh, you are on uh, instagram are you on facebook yes i am on instagram i'm on facebook um same. i'm also on on twitter right same um, name yes same name same name. okay yes okay yes perfect amazing i love that you must <laughs> come back yes i will sure it was such a such I mean I really I feel I'm talking to another myself another self oh. mind in you you know <laughs> you're so. very kind thank you <laughs> thank, thank you you've been fine too thank very you nice. very much yeah, i thank truly thank you so much yeah thank you so much i truly have appreciated sharing with you today having this interview is awesome i know especially right now because so many people are at home with the you know lockdowns and pandemics yes. and all that it's yes. things like this that actually make a difference to them because we can talk about the pageants yes of course but there's things in this world that people don't know and don't understand Absolutely. which are more important so this has yes. just taken a turn for even better Absolutely. you know yeah so thank Very you true. so much thank you so much so, lydia it was such a pleasure talking to you and it really made me get in touch with my own self somewhere oh thank you thank i you really so appreciate much. that thank you yeah thank you right. so much lydia love you so much my dear i love you too thank you namaste 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 thanks bye bye bam 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 ah 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 bam 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 bam